Hi, I'm developing a survival RPG voxel game, and I've been working with the procedural terrain generation to get mountains, oceans, plains, biomes, flora, and structure into the world. I won't explain in depth how the algorithms for generating randomness work in this video, but you can expect one to come in the near future. Let's see first a couple examples of simple procedural terrain generation. In the first example, we only return stone which means that we'll have whole chunks filled with stone. This is a procedurally generated terrain, but as you can see, this world is boring and feels empty, even though it's fully filled with blocks. We can walk, but cannot place any block on the surface. So let's fix that. Instead of filling all the chunks with stone, we will check if the height is lower than 50 to place a stone, and if it's higher, it will be air. Now we can walk and place blocks on the surface, but it's still pretty boring to play. Let's try then adding some mountains. And yes, I say mountains. You will see why I say that in a minute. In this example, we calculate the height threshold with the sinus function in the x-axis, and if a block is higher than the threshold, it will be air, or else it will be stone. Now, you can see why I said mountains, right? They are waves, in fact. And what if we do this for the z-axis as well? Then we get something more similar to mountains, but we are still not quite there. As you can see, we went from a flat world to one with height variation, but it's still pretty boring to play, as you can really see any variation in the terrain, and it's all the same boring pattern. And this is where the noise comes pretty handy. Noise is present in images, sound, or signals. In this case, we will define noise as a random fluctuation of data. If we generate terrain using random noise, we get this result. Note though that it's not really random, it's pseudo-random in fact, but for the sake of simplicity, I will use the term random for pseudo-randomness in this video. As you can see, it generates random terrain, but it's not really playable because it's not really smooth and has no coherence at all. In order to fix that, we must use some algorithms to create smoother noise. There are multiple different algorithms. One commonly used is Perlin noise, but there are also cellular noise, simplex noise, and so on. Applying directly Perlin noise to the map, we get something like this. Much better, isn't it? But it's still boring and becomes repetitive very fast. To get more detail and variation, we use a kind of improved Perlin noise algorithm which is called Fractal Perlin Noise. I won't explain in this video how it works in depth. That will be for the video I mentioned at the start of this one. So, if you are interested, please consider subscribing to my channel. But, in simple terms, it generates multiple different Perlin Noise maps and blends them into one. Now that we have talked a bit about the basics on how we will get randomness in the world, I will talk about the actual process of terrain generation using noise maps. This process is split in different phases. The terrain height phase is the first one we must generate. We fill the world with air blocks or stone, and to do that, we use multiple noise maps. Each of them influences the height of the terrain in a different way. The first noise map defines the continentalness of that specific coordinate. If the continentalness is low, it's water, whether it be ocean or sea. And when the continentalness value is positive, we have land. Now, to make the land and the ocean less boring, we add another noise map, which is the erosion map. This defines if it's a mountain or a more plain terrain. This way, we get continents with height variations in it. And finally, the peak noise map. This one is mainly to create random peaks in the map, to make a little more variation and cool looking details. Blending them into one map, we get the height map. Now, we fill the world using this height map out of stone, and we can proceed to the next phase, biomes. In order to decide which biome is in that specific coordinate, we choose the current height. We just computed and two more noise maps, temperature and humidity. For example, if we have low temperature and low humidity, we get a snow thunder, but if we have high temperature and low humidity, the biome will be a desert. Now, we can set different conditions for each biome to decide the final biome in that specific block. In the game, there are currently six different biomes. Meadows, forest, snow forest, snow tundra, desert, sea, and ocean. But more will be coming in the future. Once we get the biome, we can place the blocks for the surface and the water. If an air block is under water level, we place water. If the block is at the surface, we place grass. And if it's under grass, instead of stone, we place dirt. Each biome has a specific surface block. In the case of the snow forest, the surface block is snow, or sand, in the desert. With that, we have set up the main landscape, but we are not done with that. We must place structures and decorations, such as trees, plants, or flowers. To generate structures, trees, or flora, we follow a similar approach for all of them. Each biome has a list of structures, trees, or flora that can be generated. Once we have set up the properties for each biome, we must generate three more noise maps, one for each feature. If the conditions are fulfilled to generate a specific structure, we place in that block a structure generator, which will then generate the whole structure of that specific type, with its rooms, loot, and special entities. In the case of trees, they work in a pretty similar way, as they can be treated like small structures. On the other hand, other smaller flora, like plants and flowers, are only one block, so we can place them straight on the surface with no generators needed. 
And this is the final result of applying all the population steps together. It's still far to be fully completed, as a lot of polishing has to be done. More structures, trees, flora variations and biomes have to be added. But it's a pretty solid base to work on and add details in the future. Before concluding the video, I want to first thank you for all your feedback and suggestions, as I can improve more and more the game thanks to you. Secondly, I will slow down the frequency a bit of devlogs because I want to focus more on bringing quality videos with tons of content in each update, but I will still upload videos related to game development or programming in general weekly, and you can expect one devlog each month more or less, with more polished content in the game. Also, if you want to see more constant updates of the game between devlogs, you can follow me on Twitter, as I will be uploading for showing the progress more frequently. And that being said, thanks everyone for watching, and see you next week.